know, which I know you, as you like to say, you know, I think consolation prizes for, you know, how hard you battle, but at the end of the day, when you like, or what do you like about the way you guys finished as opposed to maybe the way you started? Well, we played with some desperation, uh, but for, to be a young team, that's the, the attitude, the culture, the, the philosophy we got to have to start the game. We don't have the luxury of being a young team and having trouble scoring to come in and not play desperate to start the game. That was a message at halftime. Um, and we just weren't competing at the level you need to compete to be a playoff team like the Clippers. And once we decided to do that, um, we did. And uh, again, it's, uh, you know, a lot of it is, is I think is dictated to shooting. And it's an age old idea that the fact that uh, when you're missing shots, you, you know, it takes your energy level down and we can't let our bad shooting dictate our energy level on the defensive end, whether it's loose balls, uh, getting into shooters, closing out the shooters with 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 uh, with the not hoping they missed, but to make them miss, and all those little things that we did in the second half, we did not do in the first half. Individually, uh, Cade struggled shooting a little bit early, but then it seemed like in the fourth quarter he played his best basketball. Is that uh, a good sign for you to see not hanging the head and say maybe today's not my day instead of finishing? And that's what we did. That's why I put Cade back in. That's why I put Jeremy back in to try to get him to get a rhythm, not only shooting the ball, but defensively. We got some stops. If you start feeling good about yourself, it gave you a little, gave us a little bit more energy. Um, and again, it was good to see Jeremy get a stretch of offensive plays down the down the close of the game and also Cade. And I, I think that's something we but we can't do. We can't let our shooting dictate our defense. Well, when you look across the league, it, it looks like there's 23, 24 teams that are all in the mix for the, the playoffs right now. Have you felt that difference this season uh, compared to last year where it just seems like the overall depth of the league is a lot it's, it's the depth of the league. You, you got a group of young teams. You got a group of, of playoff teams. And it's it's going to be nip and tuck the rest of the way. Oh, and that's what I keep telling our guys. You know, if we can ever get a, a streak of, uh, of, of a hot shooting, so to speak, some of the shooting that we work on each day and but we got to clearly shoot better than 24 percent from the three and and better than 36 from the field and to give ourselves an opportunity um because like i was telling johnny our deep defense down the stretch we were playing as pretty hard i mean but again we can't we got to start the game that way but uh it's somehow some way we got to produce uh, some offensive thrust to give us, uh, uh, give yourself a chance. <clears throat> when you look at um, Sadiq, Jeremy, and, and Kay, uh, the last three games have all been sort of in a smut. Where they had as far as figuring out how to play off of each other a little bit? It seems like there's been some give and take there as far as I'm figuring out who's going to take the uh, Well, I don't think that's the, I think everyone understands our role, uh, what we're trying to do offensively. Uh, I, you know, I would say is look at the open shots that we're creating for each other, and they're there. Uh, I don't think it's a fact of who's handling the ball, who's point guard, who's two, who's the four. I think we have that pretty well figured out. It's just the fact of the ball comes to me, my feet are set, I knock it down. And, you know, the, it sounds simplistic, but, uh, you know, and again, I don't think it's only, I think you have some other teams, good shooting teams around the league that are having some of the same issues. And not to keep harping on this, Jimmy, but you talk about contagiousness, whether good or bad. For this team, when you guys have your good three-point shooting nights, everybody's shooting well. And then the bad ones, it's maybe one guy. Is that is unique to you in your time? Yeah, it's like it's that? amazing whether it's contagious. You know, you one or two guys start knocking them down and other guys start seeing it, feeling good. And I don't know the answer to it, James, but that, that's what it usually happens, unfortunately, <laughs> for all of us. But uh we have a great group of young men that work their butts off and work on their shooting. Uh, now we got to translate it from practice to the games. Tonight was the first time Ty played the backup lineup with Hardenstein and Serge together. He said he didn't actually want to play those two together, the two center lineup. Mm -hmm. Because you had played Serge so often with Jonas mm -hmm. um, in Toronto, yeah. I guess. What do you think are the limitations or the advantages that come with playing surge? The There's no limitations, I don't think. Again, this are, they're uh, <laughs> positive issues, but uh, surge can play with anybody. Surge can stretch the floor. He hit a three tonight, I think. Uh, that's one thing we found out in Toronto. He can go out and stretch the floor. He's well, You have two rim protectors in Jonas and, and Serge. I don't know about Harkenstein. I don't know what his, his defensive game is, but... <clears throat> 
I think Serge can play with, he can play with anybody. Um, his skill set trans, translates to the four. Um, and uh, I, I don't, you know, again, that's not my issue, but I just know what we did in Toronto with him. Did you, did you playing him in the line of Toronto, did that take any persuading of Serge to play in the center? Or no, he no, he knew he understood that it, when he, we traded for him uh, that Jonas Valentunas was our starting center, and he wasn't he wasn't going to go anywhere. So he understood to play, um, and he, he did, and he I thought he did an excellent job for us. Dwayne, I know you said you want to put the. LeBron, Isaiah, and today in the rear view mirror and move on. But with your guys' next game being against the Lakers, a lot's going to be made of it. You said pregame that, you know, that's not typical of him, mm -hmm. that that doesn't represent who he is at all. Mm -hmm. Who is he? Like, what should we know about Isaiah? About Isaiah? Yeah. He's a great kid. I mean, that, that right there, I don't know any man that wouldn't react. Maybe not the second and third time, they made a little bit old, but the first time, I don't know of any man that wouldn't react that way. And anybody who suspects anybody just to take it and, you know, see blood and then not react any kind of way. And again, this is nothing against LeBron. Us, anyone in that situation would have reacted violently uh, or being upset, you know, thinking that. So, uh, but that is not, rep it doesn't represent who Isaiah Stewart is. He's a great young man. Uh, around my kids and and uh, so, so there's no not there's two not as enough superlatives I could give Isaiah as a young man off the floor on the floor yeah he's full of energy plays hard and like any a lot of guys in our league but uh, it, that doesn't represent who he is and, I, and again I don't think it represents who LeBron is LeBron is unfortunate play but it happened and uh, but anybody who expects you know, somebody to see that happen and, oh, okay, we're cool. And, uh, you know, it, but it's over with. It's done. Isaiah's finished, talked about it. I, uh, LeBron's talked about it. It's in the rearview mirror. Dwayne, nice to see you. It's been a long time. Hey, uh, how you doing, buddy? Good. good. Uh, I wonder, care about these guys beyond the court. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from the moment that that happened and probably the relief that it wasn't worse to conversations that I'm sure you guys had the last couple of days, how do you end up feeling about it? Know what he's learned from it, what he pulls out of it. He learned that the at last two attempts to go the other, but again, he didn't hit anybody from the Lakers. Uh, you know, he was remorseful, Dave, and he was, you know, upset that it happened. Uh, but there, you know, he's he's forgotten about not forgotten about it, but it's over with it's in the rearview mirror. Uh, but I think he learned that you know, you can't, there's a there's a level that you can go. I don't blame him for being, I don't think any man would, or anybody would be up, you know, blame him for being upset from getting hit, seeing blood, the way it happened. But uh, just the extra reaction. And again, the league made the right decision for both men and, and we move on. Got a question from Steve Pernaki on Zoom. Hey, Dwayne, could you talk about Isaiah's play today? He, he wasn't much of a factor offensively, but he was on the boards. Could he assess his play today? That's who he is, Steve. He, he's a rebounder. He's a fierce competitor. Uh, there's been a lot of guys like Isaiah over the years. Uh, you know, Buck Williams, got those guys like that that are just men in the paint. And, uh, you know, I know, remember the days back in Seattle where you used to have battles with Buck Williams in Portland, saying he's the same type of guy, same type of player. Uh, and, you know, so that, but I think when they see this guy, they think, oh, he's crazy. He, no, but that, what happened the other night is not, rep doesn't represent who Isaiah is. He's a competitor. He plays hard. You don't have to say giddy up to him. He comes out ready to play each and every night. Um, so, uh, but I thought he brought that physicality to our game tonight to rebound, to set the tone uh, on the boards. And with Jeremy, you touched on how he stayed with it, even after one for 10 in the first half. And, and and everything sort of started to flow for him again. What did you see that enabled him to do that? Was it was it better shot selection? Was it just more confidence? You know, what did you see as the coach well, that enabled well, him? He was getting some sweat shots. He was getting to the a basket, Steve. He was getting to the free throw line. But uh, he was trying to get into the paint with force. Uh, and it gets the Clippers with their big front line with Serge and Harkenstein, Harkenstein, and also with Zubox, you, you have to go in there with force. Uh, and a kid like Terrence Mann plays bigger than what he is. And so you have to go in there with force and, and create, uh, contact yourself and then finish. And that's what I thought Jeremy did in the second half. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. All right.